Welcome back. In the last episode, we integrated a pager into our view model and used it to populate the UI using a paging data adapter. We also took considerations for adding indicators for load states and retrying if there is an error. In this video, we're dialing things up a notch. Till now, we've been pulling our data directly from the network, which only works in the best of circumstances. We may sometimes be on a slow internet connection or even have lost internet connection entirely. Even if our connection is good, we certainly don't want our apps to be a data hog, as refetching data every time we navigate to a screen is wasteful. The solution to these issues is to have a local cache we pull from and refresh only when necessary. Updates to the cache should always hit the cache first and then prop be propagated back into the view model. This way, the local cache is the single source of truth. Conveniently for us, the paging library has this covered with a little help from the room library. Let's get into it. Since the data source we'll be paging through is going to be from our local database instead of the API directly, the first thing we want to do is update our paging source. The good news is we barely have to do much. The little help from room I mentioned earlier, turns out it's a bit more than that. Getting a paging source from a room DAO is as simple as adding a definition for it on the DAO. In the GitHub repository, we can now update the construction of the pager to use the new paging source. Now that's all well and good, but we're missing something. How does the local database ever get populated? Enter the remote mediator. It's the class responsible for fetching more data from the network when the paging source runs out of items to load from the database. Let's see how this works. A key thing to note about the remote mediator is that it is a callback. The result from the remote mediator is never returned to the UI as is. It's just the way paging notifies us as the developer that its paging source has run out of data. It is our job to update the database and tell paging there is new data in the database. The first abstract method is the initialize method. It is the first call made to the remote mediator before any loading has begun, and it returns an initialize action. The initialize action is either launch initial refresh, which will cause the load method to be called with a refresh load type, or skip initial refresh, which will cause the remote mediator not to refresh unless the UI specifically requests it. In our case, since repository starts may update often, we return launch initial refresh. Next is the load method. The load method is called our boundaries defined by the load type and the paging state where the load type may either be a refresh, append, or prepend. It is responsible for fetching the data, persisting it to disk, and informing the results, which can either be an error or success. If it's an error, the load states reflect it and the load may be retried. If it's successful, however, the pager needs to be notified if more data can be fetched or not. Since the load method is a suspending function that returns the result, it is important that the UI is able to accurately reflect the status of the work being done. In the last video, we touched briefly on the with load state header and footer extension and saw how we can use it to display loading header and footers. A closer look at the name of the extension reveals a type, the load state. Let's go over this type some more. Since paging is a series of asynchronous events, it's important that the UI reflects the current state of the data being fetched. In paging, the loading status of the pager is represented with the combined load states type. Like its name implies, this class is a combination of other types that convey loading information. These other types are, one, the load state, a sealed class that fully describes the loading status, which can be loading, not loading, or error. And then also there is load states, a data class containing load states for append, prepend, and refresh. Typically, the prepend and append load states are used to react to extra data fetches, while the refresh load state is used to react to initial loads, refreshes, and retries. Since the pager may be loading from a paging source or a remote mediator, the combined load states data class has two load state fields, one for the paging source and the other for the remote mediator. As a convenience, combined load states also has refresh, append, and prepend fields similar to the fields you find in load states, which will reflect the load state of the remote mediator or the paging source, depending on your paging configuration and a few other semantics. Be sure to check out the docs on the behavior of the fields in different scenarios. 
Using this information to update your UI is as easy as collecting from the load state flow exposed by the page and adapter. In the case of our app, we can use it to display a loading spinner on first load. We start collecting from the flow and use the combined load state store refresh field to show a progress bar if the pager is in loading and the existing list is empty. We use the refresh field because we only want to show a launch progress bar when we launch the app the first time or because we explicitly trigger refresh. We can also check if any of the loading states have aired out and notify the user. Now, if we run the app, we should see a progress bar till the page and source has been populated. That's it for this episode. To recap, we, page from the database is a single source of truth, use a remote mediator to feed the database page and source, updated the UI with progress bars based on the load states from the page and adapters load state flow. We'll be wrapping up this series in the next video, so stay tuned and see you soon.